town whose house 16 serial killers, born and raised with no leads. Can you solve the mystery of the Buckaroo Butcher? Hey guys, it's Spam Media, and today we'll be taking a trip back to the West for one of the best comic series I've ever read, Nailbiter, which is published by Image Comics. It's a murder mystery thriller with a perfect amount of misdirection, and it'll keep you screaming for the next volume. You see, Buckaroo's a small town in America, some nice scenery, a nice bee farming industry, and it's been home to some of the world's worst serial killers of all time. We follow Finch, a detective on the edge of suicide, when he gets a call from an old friend who's investigating the village. Throughout the story, we find out how each serial killer made a name for themselves, from that illiterate book burner that killed five people in a library, to a man all too keen to find out how many clowns actually fit in that tiny car, but one serial killer is still skulking about the village, the nail biter. You see, he was cleared of all charges, and he now lives in an isolated cabin in the woods. With Finch and a local sheriff, all three are trying to uncover the mystery of the missing detective and save the world from the Buckaroo Butchers. The thing I find amazing about this series is it's four volumes in and I still don't know the answer to the mystery. Like, I never get caught out with a twist. But in the list of things that it could be that caused these serial killers to, to emerge in this village is genetics from an asylum, luck, Aztec rituals, impressionable children, a doctor who works in the hospital, experiments, a god, ancient caves that run under the city releasing gas, and even bees, yes bees could be the reason why everybody's a serial killer. And they're all as possible as each other, very realistically portrayed, but they could all be connected at the same time. That's the problem with other mysteries. Oh, so we meet a creepy guy at the start, and then we go on to meet a, a very savvy, well-kempt businessman. Well, it's never the creepy guy, it's never the, the farmer, so it's going to be the business guy, and we all know it's him, but they still have to have an hour and a half of film. And that's why I tend not to go for mysteries, but this one's fantastic. And it never skimps out on character development. I feel a connection with every individual character. I think the reason why Nailbiter's mystery works so well is they find this beautiful space between questions and answers where they'll lead you to every step before an event and they'll show you the aftermaths of what happened during the event but they'll leave out the little middle bit that gives you all the answers that you're looking for. This gives the comic a really good opportunity to enhance its lore without answering too many questions and it never really explains every little detail to anything. It'll give you hints and clues but it leaves the viewer the room to speculate. This means that the further on that you read, the deeper and deeper the rabbit hole goes and your wallet will get sucked into the comic shop like your wallet and your PC during a Steam summer sale. It's absolutely amazing how connected you get to this storyline. Another one of my favourite aspects of this comic is the art and oh my god, the design is so versatile but it's 100% built around how somebody could pull off something scary. It does everything it has to be to work around what the theme of the story is. When I actually picked up the comic I was expecting the usual from image at the time uh, within the first three pages it would be an explicit sex scene or a child getting born like in Saga but in the first few pages you actually get met with this and this really sticks in your mind for the whole story it really gives you gravity to what these people would do as serial killers and I was hooked instantly it was so unique and so fresh and I loved it and the art has this scratchiness to it that can make you uncomfortable what could be misconstrued as a lack of skill quickly changes in your mind to one of the most genius design choices that comics have ever came out with. When you realise that a pristine art style like what you might get with Marvel and DC just wouldn't work with what the material is in this comic. If you're looking for a real scare this Halloween and a mystery that will leave you with strings up your walls, you can't do much better than Nailbiter. I'm currently reading through the volume so I've only finished volume 4 but the 5th is out on the 2nd of November and I honestly can't wait. If this video gets a good enough reception I'm going to talk about it. It's just one of my favourite things to read at the moment. I've waited so long, I think the last issue came out in June, um, that the trade backs are available but I don't tend to buy them because they're a bit flimsy if you know what I mean. But I think this is where I'm going to end it. If you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe and if you want much more of the same I've recently made a video on one of my favourite authors Junji Ito. If you want to pick up some stories from Nailbiter then I recommend the volumes they're the most affordable but there are collector's editions with the first two volumes in it for about £30 and this is a series that you want to pick up before the mystery has been resolved because honestly it's so exciting and I'll see you guys guys next time.